Monday Guitar Motivation, a little bit different today. I'm actually in Anaheim, California for the NAM show. And uh, so I thought I would just go live. I don't have all my stuff here, but I did want to talk about something that's very important when you travel, like me coming out here. You know, it's it's about five hours of flight to get out here. And uh, usually a layover is involved, something like that. So I thought, hey, let's talk about this a little bit. So it doesn't matter, you know, whether you, you're in an Uber or taking a train or flying. If you've got some extra time, remember, you can always still practice, even though you might not have your guitar and things like that. So I thought I would talk about four things that might be really important for you to think about. So number one is always remember that even though you're not in your usual practice place, you can always visualize, and I know that seems silly, but so much of my practice, so much of my study, and even in my teaching, I tell people about visualization. You know, learning to visualize, like listening to a song and visualizing the song, or learning to visualize a scale on your fretboard, things like that. You know, you don't always have to be traveling. You might be at, at work or at school or something and have some downtime, and you just sit and you, you, you visualize ideas. You know, I always tell people, if you can see it in your head, that's the first step of being able to play it. So it's really important to be able to do that. OK, so that's number one is always remembering that you could just take some time and really visualize. Maybe you're listening to music and you're visualizing things. Maybe you're not listening to anything and you're just visualizing the fretboard in your mind or you're visualizing how a, a song or a pattern would go. You know, 12 bar blues thing, anything. It could be anything. The cage system, for instance, across your fretboard or a particular scale or mode that you're working on. So that really leads to the second thing which is having a pencil and a piece of paper and you're literally just drawing out something on the fretboard that you're thinking about you're visualizing but then you're actually able to look at it on the guitar this is something that i used to do a lot when i was in high school in my study halls i would take a piece of paper and i would just draw out my fretboard and then draw out the strings and it usually looked pretty horrible and then i would draw out for instance uh, a scale in one position and then i would label all those notes and then I would move over and I would find where all those notes would be in the second position, right? And again, maybe I already know this from my visualization, but if I don't, this is a great study to be able to figure out where those are in that next position. And then you just look at that piece of paper and you just study it until it becomes a visual thing. So learning how to just sit down and draw things is really important too. And it's really easy. It doesn't have to look good. It's just there to make that connection from what you're thinking about to what you're seeing and then again on a deeper level learning how to visualize that so that's the second thing that i think is really important the third thing is is maybe you just bring a book or a pdf or something like that and you study right same same idea but now you're reading something or you know maybe you have uh, you know for instance a guitar zoom course and you've you've got the pdf for that course so you're just looking through it at particular parts in there that you want to study or you want to read about or maybe you've got a you know a music theory book that you want to read or something like that that's always a really great thing to do is just spend some time reading as well okay so number one visualization number two drawing okay and again it doesn't have to be a work of art it's for you right number three reading or studying something OK, and then the fourth thing which I wanted to show you, which I always travel with. So this is what I take on the plane right here. OK, this is called a shred neck if you've ever seen these before. All right. And I'm not endorsed by them or anything. I just want to show you this. So what's great about this is with this here, I'm going to move back just a little bit with this thing. What I can do is I can bring it wherever it is I go, whether it's, you know, on a plane or whatever it might be, I'll put it in my backpack. And then once they realize that it is a not a not a weapon and I'm allowed on the plane, which most of the time everything is fine, you know, they'll see it through the, the scanner and it'll be fine. But um, I'll bring this on the plane. And what you can do with it is again, I'm holding my phone at the same time here. But basically what you can do is you can practice like legato things, scale stuff, things like that with it. So and you can practice picking and stuff with it, too, although it feels kind of awkward to me to use for picking. So I do a lot of my legato exercises and things like that with these shred necks. And I just I just bring it along with me everywhere I go. So if I'm on a family vacation and yes, I am spending time with my family for sure. But let's say we're sitting at the pool and, and you know, people are swimming or whatever might be going on. I might just bring it down there and just practice on that. 
you know, just something very easy. Or when I wake up in the morning, I'm an early riser and other people in the family are sleeping. I might just practice on that. And certainly on the airplane and things like that, that's exactly what I do. So it's called a shred neck and they make a bunch of different kinds, but it's just a really great way of, of keeping up on practice when you can't have a guitar available. Okay. And there's, I'm sure there's a million other things out there like that too, but I just find that that thing works really great. So basically what I do is on the bottom here, you just kind of hold that part and then you just, you know, just practice your usual stuff like you always do. And uh, so that's a great way of keeping up on my chops if I want to. And of course I can use all four of those ideas at any time when I have this time available. So I just want to remind you that it's very important to think about that. Just because you're traveling doesn't mean it may be non-conventional, right? or unconventional, that's that's perfectly fine, but at least you've got ways that you can approach this so you can stay up on your practice, you can stay motivated, and maybe it will even help you in different ways because you're out of your comfort zone and so you have a chance to work on something a little bit different, all right? So take care, stay positive. Remember, check out guitarzoom.com uh, for any guitar lesson stuff that you might be looking for and subscribe you know, share, like, all that sort of thing. And please comment. Let me know. I'll try and check this a little bit later and, and reply to your comments if I have some time, all right? So take care, everybody. Stay positive. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon.